guys, hope you're doing well and cooking a lot during this period. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Kitchen Fundamentals. In the last video, we actually combined two simple ingredients, eggs and potatoes, and to make a dish called tortilla di papas, you can click here to watch it. Uh, and we already done eggs already, so this episode is about potatoes, the humble potatoes, the humble kantang. Uh, we're going to make two simple recipes with this potato. Uh, we're going to make a crispy... Uh, rosti as well as a fluffy mashed potato so be sure to watch the video to the end uh, to, to catch the recipes and if you like such content feel free to subscribe to our channel and also give a thumbs up it helps this channel a lot uh, yeah all right potatoes let's go well the first thing to know is that there are two main categories in potatoes they are the waxy potatoes and they are the starchy potatoes waxy potatoes don't really break down when they cook so they're great for salads and things like that um, starchy potatoes are those become fluffy you want them for like roast potatoes, you want them for mashed potatoes where it becomes really fluffy and nice. Here we have two kinds of potatoes, one on the left it's sort of a medium waxy and on the right it's a russet potatoes. While there are thousands of types of potatoes around the world, in Singapore we're quite limited to two main kinds of potatoes in the supermarkets. you find the all-purpose yellow kantang curry potatoes and you also find russet potatoes which is, men, which is the starchy ones. Here are some of the typical names you'll find for waxy and starchy potatoes in Singapore. Depending on the dish you want to do, you got to use the right potatoes for the job. Uh, I'll put a link to our blog for some examples of what kind of potatoes to use. Okay, first up, we're going to make mashed potato, creamy mashed potatoes. Uh, for this, you want to use the starchy potatoes. You want to use, in this case, Singapore, the most common one is russet potatoes. Go ahead and bring a pot of water to boil, season it with some salt. And if you're feeling really fancy about it, um, like me, add a sprig of herbs, in this case rosemary. Next, prepare a bowl of cold water. You want to put your cut potatoes inside this water because potatoes like apples, they become brownish as they oxidize with the contact of air. Uh, nobody wants to eat a brown mashed potatoes. You want it to be creamy and white. Okay, next, peel your potatoes. And if you see any like black spots, just go ahead and just keep shaving until the black spot disappears uh, and we're gonna cut the potatoes into small pieces I like to cut them about into trees um, you don't want them too big because it take very long to boil you don't want them too small as well because if it's too small it will start dissolving in the boiling water as well so I think trees is a good nice compromise And once the water is boiling go ahead and drop the potatoes into the water and it should be boiling for about 15 minutes um, what you're looking for is actually for the whole potato to be tender um, how to check is that we use a knife and just try to poke it if it goes through very easily that means you're done and next we want to strain the potatoes you can actually just mash the potatoes in the same pot you're boiling in just pour the hot water but in this case I'm transferring to a nice glass bowl for video purposes and don't be a noob like me because I left the rosemary leaf inside for too long and the whole leaves have started to disintegrate. It should have fished out the rosemary um, maybe 5 minutes into the boil. To mash, you're gonna need one of these potato mashers. Uh, this is gonna make our job quite easy but since it's so tender, you can also use a fork but it's just gonna take a bit longer. And the most contentious part about mashed potatoes is how much butter do you use? In the restaurants, typically they put about one to one, which means one part butter to one part um, potatoes. Uh, here for myself at home, I use about half, which means about eyeball, you just gotta eyeball it about the volume of potatoes that you have. About half of it is uh, butter. But if you wanna put more, go ahead. But I wouldn't recommend putting anything less than half. And we're gonna add some cheese. You can use almost any kind of cheese, uh, but I'm using parmesan, which is the most standard. Now you want to work quite quickly here because you want the heat of the potatoes to melt the butter and cheese. So go ahead and mash it up, melt it and mix it into a nice gloopy mess. And once the texture is right, you want to taste it and adjust for seasoning. Uh, mine needed a little bit more salt, cheese and black pepper. And if you're feeling fancy, this is where you bring out your truffle oil. Uh, just a teaspoon of it will make the difference. And you're pretty much done. Uh, go ahead and uh, plate it up and chop some green onions or any kind of herbs you want really. Uh, rosemary, chives, thyme. It'll be beautiful in this sense. And uh, enjoy! I'm 
up next, how to make crispy rosti. I love rosti since the mache days. It's a long queue but it's so delicious but it's also the cheapest thing there is in mache. And here's how to make it. In terms of potatoes, I think rosti is quite forgiving in terms of what types of potatoes you use. I've used russet before, I've used um, normal medium waxy before. Um, it all kind of works out but I think the best result, uh, medium waxy seems to be the way to go. So I'm using granola potatoes here. You are going to need a grater for this, there's just no two ways around it. You can chop it very finely but it just won't be the same. And you need a bowl and you need a colander. And we're going to peel the potatoes and we're going to grate it into the colander. You want to be using the big holes for this grating. Now in order to make the rosti crispy, we need to remove the, all the excess water from the potatoes. So we're going to use some salt, a big pinch of salt, uh, mix it into the grated potatoes and let it sit for 5 minutes. And to make sure that we have removed all the excess water from the potatoes, we're going to give it a good squeeze with our hands, uh, squeeze out all those excess water. Uh, to make a life easier, you want a pan that is non-stick. Okay, let's get cooking. So you want to preheat your pan on a medium heat. Uh, put some butter on the pan. You want enough butter that it coats the entire surface of the pan. And once the butter is bubbling, you can put the potatoes inside. Um, and you, once inside, you want to sort of flatten it into a nice flat pancake. So we're cooking this for about 2 or 3 minutes. What we're looking for is for the sides to be brown. The little edges where it's brown. When it's brown, it tells us that the bottom is brown as well uh, and it's ready to flip. So keep an eye on the edges. It should be bubbling with oil just a little bit. If it's not, drizzle some oil on the sides just to make sure that it's sufficient oil. You should really try to avoid the urge to sort of pick below the potatoes because that will tear the whole rusty apart. Try to avoid that. Once you've established that it's browning on the sides, you can flip it. There's two ways to flip it. One is using a plate to flip it, the other way is just to toss it in the air and flip it. Like you see here, which I fail terribly, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. Once flipped, you can go on for another one or two minutes just to cook the bottom side. I uh, just want to get some browning on the other side and we are good to go. And enjoy this however you want. I just make it simple with some herbs and creme fraiche. But you can put like sausages on it, you can put smoked salmon, you can put a fried egg, put some cheese. The sky's the limit. Enjoy! Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments uh, what else you want to see from my channel as well. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, you can click here to subscribe or you can click here to watch more stuff from my channel. Bye! Happy cooking!